right, so let's see if I can capture this. That looks okay. Maybe it'll stay, maybe it won't. It might stay. We shall see. All right, so further problem with this and why I don't typically recommend people work that much with acrylic, but it is fun. Is, uh, see, I'm going at, so I'm probably going a little over 2,400 at the moment. we get it roughed a little bit to where it's actually half ass round we uh, take it down turn it up chatter that you're hearing is because it's on a spindle and um, unfortunately for me it's not hardened if it was it would be a little bit more stable um, but it's also very small so the uh, chances of finding a hardened spindle or arbor to use are pretty slim and what a sound it makes So what we're looking for now is we're looking to make sure that it's round and uh, it's pretty damn close. It leaves a pretty cool pattern <laughs> for what with the chatter and all that. That little tire tread right there is strictly because of the chatter. So, here we go. Back to the spinning majiggin'. There we go. And yes. That is a Jacob chuck. No touchy while it spins. If you get caught between the chuck and this piece, this piece here, yeah, that's, um, you know, hope you've got a loving girlfriend who will open your ketchup bottle for you. I don't eat ketchup, so I'm not worried about it. This is called is, oh my gosh, my tool went to the wrong spot. There we go. Alright, so we're getting close to what I want. with you at this point is mainly silence. But holy crap that's loud. vibration but also the fact that I am basically scraping it instead of actually cutting and um, you can cut this actually you can you can shave off a shaving you can see the little shavings here um, the reason I'm not is because this is a very small piece and I want to take off as much as possible now this tool is extremely sharp I should, probably shouldn't drag my finger across it like that but um, I want to take off as little as possible, so this is going to be a lot of scraping cuts. But, for these purposes, I'm already done. And that is essentially start to finish what it takes. 
So, uh, wet dry sand vapor at a lower RPM. And I like to start out with a higher RPM because, well, it spreads the uh, lubricant around. Which the lubricant that I am using is not actually water, it's, um, it's a coolant. Um, it smells good. That's basically why I use it. Uh, it's just a standard tap, tap coolant, uh, cutting coolant. Nothing really all that special about it. And then uh, I usually start at about three or four hundred and move on from there, unless I got a lot of really bad rough spots, in which case I may move on to a smaller grid, um, 200 or so. I never found it any need to go to uh, 100 or anything lower than that because then it just turns to powder. Um, and uh, I'll be honest, I don't. Never been able to find a hundred grit wet or dry sandpaper, and so uh, this has had to do it. And uh, it's okay. Just the final three hundred may take a little while longer in some spots. Like I've got a little shattered spot right there, but I can see it, and that's okay. And then, uh, once I got it to that right there, I can pull out some uh, eight hundred. And I just go straight from 300 to 800. And uh, the, uh, the 800 does really well as well. Uh, I'll be done in just a second, and you will see start to finish what it takes to make an odd. The only thing is, you didn't see me drill a hole and uh, tap it, which takes very little time. Mark the hole, a little center punch, uh, which Literally, you can just a quick tap, have it, and then drill it. Uh, no need to center drill this, or at least not for this purposes. Um, and mainly that is because of time constraints. And yes, you are seeing green scotch right bad because they're cheap and they do a good job. If you were making wood, you hear it squeak. That's actually the uh, scotch right catch and hold. The uh, little powder that you see on here is acrylic and uh, acrylic likes to weld to itself I've noticed and so if you're not careful it'll actually weld to the pad and you'll end up with a really bad rough spot that you'll have to go back and sand so that's it basically done uh, the last step is to take a small piece of cotton cloth um, and rip you a little piece off or cut it off you don't want it to be too long because, uh, there you go, so it's cotton. And then we take a buffing compound of some kind, which this is a flex cut, which is my personal favorite because it's cheap, because I usually keep it on hand. I was gonna say it's cheap, but it's not actually cheap, it's actually expensive. You use your cotton bag. And this is why you cut it, as you saw that grabbing, that's actually the threads from the fabric trying to grab and suck into the chuck. Uh, if it's long and you've got your finger on here, well that's your finger. And uh, again with your girlfriend and her opening the ketchup bottles, I hope she's alright with that because uh, my wife would not be. Alright, and that should do it. I haven't stopped it or taken a look at it. Uh, what you see is what you get. There is a knob on a 1032 arbor. And there's just a little bit of chatter right there, but I can live with that for what it's going to be. But it's sparkly and glittery and beautiful. And that took me nine minutes. And part of that was due to the fact that I had to look for this tool which had rolled under the lathe. So, yeah, there you go. That's all it takes.